What's up, guys? Novice Garage here. That's Mega Squirt two. ECU. Part two. This is what it looks like right now, as you can see. So the first thing we gotta do is fix my fuck up. <laughs> so Gabe, he actually laid the transistors down flat. I mean, he didn't lay them down flat. He had them standing up. Yeah, so this I'm is how good. they're supposed to be like that. And I had them like standing straight up. So what we had to do is chop off all the leads and we're gonna be putting bus wire on there to jump them from the transistor to the board. So that's yep. what we're gonna do today. And uh, hopefully after that, everything will work good. I don't know if I went over it in the first part, probably didn't, but uh, the Mega Square actually did turn on and I was able to load all the firmware and stuff on there. But whenever I went to go plug it into the car with this use, harness, yeah, use the harness, it like it, it just didn't turn on. So, so we're gonna go through every wire on here, and uh, we're gonna like solder, like take off every wire and see which one's a problem. Alright guys, just a quick note, whenever you're installing these transistors, you want to put this uh, heat insulation on there. It comes with a kit, that's what it looks like. Alright, so all the transistors, which basically just have the three legs, those require the compound. I just got a bunch of it on my finger. But, so all the transistors take it, and um, if you look at the board, some of these say mica. I put these little plastic shields in between the transistor and the heat sink, only if it says mica. So I think there's two of them. There's one right here. Yeah, there's, there's, one there's only there. two. Oh, there's one over here too. Oh, there's three? Yeah, this one's the third one. Only ones that like don't require the compound are going to be the resistors, and the resistors only have two legs on them. So that would be, what is that, R38 and R37. So the R stands for resistor. Okay, I just finished. Um, I just you? I just finished all this. Okay. All right, guys, so we got all this stuff back on here. And remember, you don't have to do this. This is because Gabe fucked up. Yeah. So this is how it should look. Just a little more look. clean. <laughs> look. Let me get a side shot of that. Make sure they're laying down. Yeah. All laying down. That's what these pegs are for. Here you're laying down. Um, Gabe's dad had actually lost one of them. As yeah. you can tell. Right there. So we're going to improvise by using this wire tie. Yep. It's perfect. So, yeah, good deal. Um, so next thing on the list... We gotta clean it. This, uh, we're cleaning it, so that's what you do. We got this alcohol yeah, toothbrush. That's what it does, by the way. So you gotta get all the alcohol on there, and then you just take the board. And just like that. Yep. Just brush your teeth. I'm sure, you, you all know how to do that. I mean, I'm guessing. The reason we use alcohol is because it's better than water. It evaporates. And it evaporates. So after doing this, you want to let the board dry completely before putting any kind of power against it. Yep. It helps if you have one of those automatic toothbrushes all the cool kids are using nowadays. They're rechargeable. You know, so you just yeah, that would be, be good. You can already see the uh, dirt coming off down here at the bottom on this cardboard. It's all coming off. Yeah. Okay guys, we're out in the garage. We have the computer, the access port for the ECU. Let's see if it works. Alright, if you want to come here and hold it. Okay. So if it works, one of these lights should light up. So there's so three lights at the bottom. It. And which light will light up? Uh, Any of them? If one of them lights up, that's good. Okay, good deal. So. Alright, so I'm going to put the key in the ignition, something should happen. <laughs> see, that's the problem. So as you can tell, none of the lights lit up or anything, so that's what we're trying to figure out. Well, actually, it's kind of bright out here, so I really can't tell. Yeah, you'll, you'll see one light up. So, guys, so we hooked up to the computer, and it's not even working on the computer right now. So, we're going to start removing wires. Yeah, we're going to start removing wires in the harness, correct? Yeah, because one of them's not... One or multiple aren't wired. Okay, so good trick. Always want to take a picture of the original, just in case something goes really bad and you fuck up. You always have that original... Thing. By the way, stickers are on sale, $10 a piece. Link in the description. Novice Garage sticker. Be pretty cool. Have one up there. Support 
You know, we're just trying to get big right now. So good deal. Stickers, get that shit. So are you just picking random wires or are you just going off which ones you know? I'm just trying shit right now. Alright, go ahead and turn the key on. Turn off. I watched a video on this shit and it was, it's not in the directions, but you're supposed to remove a fuse. Okay. So maybe that might do something. My fucker. I can't take the key out. Pop it there. The channel is called the Car Passion Channel. A lot of good stuff on there. The dude should have more subs than he already has, but this is the channel, if you can see that. All right. so, uh, so, go ahead and, if you want, drop a sub over there. He has some really great stuff. So, I got a lot of great information off his channel. Yep. But, uh, one thing he mentions I haven't done yet is, uh, you need to remove the ST sign fuse. Now, his Miata is a different one from mine. It's like a 91-ish. So, his is the 1.6 liter. Mine is the 1.8 liter. So I don't know if the fuses are going to be the same, but he said you have to remove a fuse, so why not? Alright, so let's go ahead and try it. So let's go to the fuse box, and the, which way? It's the ST sign fuse. S so the ST fuse is number 10. It should be the red one down in this bottom it's right number corner. 10. It's the 10 amp fuse, dumbass. Yeah, it says the number 10 on it. It's, a it's not number 10, it's the 10 amp fuse. Anyhow, <laughs> it has the number 10 on it. This fuse right here, guys, remove it. So... Again, that came off the Car Passion channel. Shout out to him. Big thanks. Hopefully, this so will make it work. So, hopefully, this will make it work. So, yeah. So, Gabe can't get it out because he's a pussy. Now, what, right? What? What, Gabe? Bitch. Bitch. <laughs> you know what I just realized? What? The fucking. <laughs> Gabe fucked up no, again. No, no, no. The, the freaking, um. What do you call it? The motherboard's not on there. I forgot what you call it. See you guys right here, let me take the camera real quick. I feel like a dumbass. Okay, so right here, you plug the CPU in. If you notice, there's no CPU plugged in. So you kind of <laughs> need that. that. It's upstairs. This is what the CPU looks like, just like that. And whenever you're putting it on the board, you want this part on the bottom, so. So hopefully this one works. Yeah. Now it takes some force to get it in there, but don't break it. Yeah, if you break it, fuck. I actually broke it once already, but I had to fix it. You have to, you have to apply a lot of force to get this thing in there. Okay. Is it in? Yeah, it's in. Now, with my look, I'm probably going to have to reflash the firmware on here. So That's pretty, what? It's not that hard. Not that hard. So, I'll have to do a video on that. Go ahead and turn the key. Okay. Let's see what happens. Turn it off. Turn it on. Nope, nothing. What's up guys, so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna connect the 12 volt and then we're gonna solder wire by wire to see which one's messing up. So right now Gabe is unsoldering all the wires. Basically just take the solder iron uh, to each of the wires, you know, unsolder it. You know, the usual. And then after that, well, hopefully we'll find out which wire is either in wrong or not in all the way. Alright guys, so I'm going to do a quick tutorial on how you can uh, flash your firmware on Megaswork 2. It still doesn't turn on, and I'm pretty sure it's because the CPU is unplugged. So what we're going to do is we're going to reflash the firmware. So you need a couple things. Um, first thing you need is a 12 volt power supply. And uh, if you actually did the build to the right, unlike me, then... Um, you would have got a stimulator, but I don't have one of those. So, I highly recommend getting a stimulator. It would have made this whole build way easier. So yeah, you just want to put your 12 volts in there. Um, schematics online. So, it's got the 12 volts. And the other thing you're going to need is a jumper. So, on the version 3.0, the uh, boot jumper is on the CPU. And it's labeled B slash LB, I believe. B slash LD. But yeah, so these two pins right here. You just take this jumper and you put it on there. So make sure that's in place. And then um, you're going to want to connect it to your computer. So this is the cable that you can purchase off doityourselfautotune.com. It's just a USB to serial converter. So it costs like 20 bucks. But you can get them on eBay. Um, I would stay away from the cheap ones because the cheaper ones can have driver issues.
So let me go ahead and plug all this stuff in. All right, so now that I got it plugged into the computer, we're gonna try to do this. And one thing I should mention is um, I'm having to do this with a computer from like before the 2000s. This thing is old, but it's running uh, Windows XP, and it's the only computer in my house that will talk to the Mega Squirt and whatever. There's no firmware on it, so. Once the firmware is loaded on it, I can take my laptop and I can open Tuner Studio and everything works just fine. But if there's no firmware on it, then it won't do anything. So I'm forced to go use this thing, which is very slow. So the software for it is this right here. This is Mega Tune, that's how you tune it. But um, to flash the firmware, you want to get this program called MS Download 2.0. So we're going to go ahead and open that. So it has some instructions on there, which we already did. Power cycle it, blah 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 blah. And um the firmware, the actual software is downloadable online. I'll put the link in the description. So you just want to download that and save it somewhere on your computer. Alright, so the firmware I'm flashing on here is monitor version 2.920. There is a lot of other firmware you can put on there. But I'm just trying to get the thing to work, so I'm going to go ahead and use this one. So you just click open. Alright, and then once you do that, it starts writing everything, and you just sit back and wait for it. And one thing I should, know, I should note is, um, when I first, like, tried to do this, all of the COM ports, all the USB settings were jacked up. So I had to go into the device manager on the control panel, and I had to switch a bunch of settings around. So, um, I can show you guys how to do that in a second once this finishes. If you open this program up and it doesn't work at all, don't panic because it's probably just a uh, USB setting that is not right. Um, I do know that I had to play with uh, the port it was using, so I had to change it to the right port for it to work. It's uh, currently using port 5 right there. So, so yeah, it's just going to write it and verify it. And um, once you get this message, it's uh, confirming that the flash was successful. So we're gonna go ahead and just for extra safety, read the signature. So yeah, I guess I guess it's good. Alright, so like I said with the COM ports, um you can go to the settings here and you can switch a bunch of stuff around. Uh, for the Megasquirt 2, these are the settings you want. Well, this can this you know varies by however you got your setup, but the communication rate you want it at 115,200 and you want this at 1 so and you can also have a log file. You can also go to your device manager and I would show you guys that but it would take two years to open the program since this computer is ancient. That's uh, how you write the firmware so what we're going to do is turn this power supply off and unplug this jumper so now that the jumper's off and I power it on, it should light up and it does. So now that I know I have power, we can actually close this and open up Megatune. And there we go. As you can see here, we are connected. So yeah guys, that's how you flash your firmware. For whatever reason, the ECU still doesn't want to work in the Miata, so I'm 99% sure it's just a wiring issue with my harness. But um, the Mega Squirt has a built-in uh, short circuit protection, so I'm pretty sure I just wired this up wrong and it's causing it not to turn on. We'll be making a future video of having the car run off this ECU and um, how to tune it. I gotta learn how to tune myself. If you want to see more Mega Squirt stuff? Be sure to comment below so I know how many of you guys want to see this stuff because it is very time consuming as you can see it would have been easier just to get the uh, plug and play version but I'm doing uh, this on a budget so and it's kind of fun so yep guys right, so like I said future video coming out on this thing actually running the Miata so stay tuned for that and uh, yeah that's all for part two I guess